but I, I have to move again. Like for the sixth time in two years. As of right now, the solitary confinement group is officially split up. Like the reason that it's so fucking impossible to breathe in my house is because there's toxic shit from a fire that was never cleaned up. I don't even know what the fuck to do with my own life. A legal apartment. I'm pretty damn sure it's legal, otherwise I would not be fucking moved in here. I'm going crazy right now, I haven't fucking talked to anybody in forever. The fact that the era of making videos interacting with strangers is over. Raccoon Eggs, also known as Ezra, Get Racked, and Rack, started his YouTube journey all the way back in 2012 on his first channel, Rackstar5000, where he gained a monopoly on bee-related content from his videos Ezra Gets Stung by a Bee and Ezra Steps on a Bee. Oh god! <laughs> Thrilling content, clearly born to create YouTube videos. Shortly after, he would stop posting on this channel though, and move on to a Minecraft channel where he supposedly played Hunger Games on a Minecraft server with a, another YouTuber named Seascoop. Sadly, there is no trace of this channel on the internet. The only reason we know it exists is because of Rack himself. When did you start YouTube, Rack and Eggs? When did I start YouTube? Yes. I started in January 2016. And uh, before that, I had, I had an old channel where I used to play Minecraft. But later on, Rack would quit this Minecraft channel for the reason of knowing that there was oversaturation in the market and the fact that it wasn't going to go anywhere. What I mean? I gotcha. So I think uh, that's when I quit know, my old Minecraft channel too. It was around 200 subs. I was like, yeah, this is not going to go anywhere. I, 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 I feel like I had the same exact epiphany as you too. Like, I feel like I was like, yeah, this everyone's doing Minecraft videos and mine are like shit compared to the, the top dogs. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, might as well just yeah, give it up and try me. again later. But lucky enough, he did come back. Not as a Minecraft channel or a B-related channel. <laughs> but instead as a TeamSpeak trolling channel. Yeah, Raccoon Eggs, that channel's original purpose was meant for TeamSpeak trolling videos. And actually, he would start off with around 50 subs because the people who had already had the joke played on them knew it and subbed to his channel. Which gave him a little bit of a push in the right direction. Alright, so back in the day I had this inside joke with a group of friends on TeamSpeak that raccoons laid eggs. And what we would do is I'd make my name Raccoon Eggs, that's all lowercase with a space between raccoon and eggs. Uh, I'd make it Raccoon Eggs on TeamSpeak, and we'd all go join random TeamSpeak servers and I'd try to convince the staff that raccoons actually laid eggs. This resulted in me getting permanently banned from a lot of TeamSpeak servers since most of them are run by absolute fucking Nazis, but the few that I didn't get banned from I actually became quite well known on, so I decided to make a YouTube channel by the same name, Raccoon Eggs, and got like 20 subs right off the bat just from shitpost self-advertising in these TeamSpeaks. The plan was to record us all being fucking TeamSpeak trolls and post that on my channel, but I got lazy and never ended up doing it. And these TeamSpeak trolling videos, the entire idea of it kind of foreshadows what Raccoon Eggs would later go on to represent in the brand of interactions with strangers, but I will be saving that segment for a little bit later. Although Raccoon Eggs had to start somewhere, and eventually he did make the actual holy grail of his career. His first ever video on that channel. You could even say his magnum opus. Holy shit, thank god I can take a break from the cancer. Yeah, obviously I was joking when I said it was his magnum opus. Rack didn't start off making gold standard content, as of any YouTuber for that matter. He started out making videos like this. That depends on one thing, little boy. How many subs you got? I got 25 subs, mate. <laughs> 25? God damn, you got a deal, buckaroo! And like this. What is up, Retard Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer Come Shot. Let's get Roy into the chromosomes. And even like fucking this. <laughs> 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 
But eventually, Rack would go on to release his first now public CSGO video, CSGO Mike Spam Offensive. There. Good, good, oh good job. Hey, Green, I love how you see the guy and then you do a fucking 180. Are you fucking retarded? Yeah, as you might be able to tell, once again, this was a, uh, different standard of content. After his CSGO Mike Spam Offensive video was released, Raccoon Eggs would go on to make commentary videos, along with sprinkling in a couple more of the CS videos with it. One of these videos, in Raccoon Eggs' words, would go on to blew the, the fuck up. up. This video in question was a video called Drake Moon is a Scam, a video addressing, at the time, a very controversial CSGO gambling website that was sponsoring a lot of content creators. After this Drake Moon video though, Raccoon Eggs' content would stay fairly consistent between the rest of his videos, doing quote-unquote CSGO filler along with spreading out a lot of commentaries. But soon, Raccoon Eggs would do a video which would change the entire fabric of his channel. What's going on everybody, Raccoon Eggs here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to become a CSGO YouTuber. The title of this video was How to Become a CSGO YouTuber, which was the start of one of Raccoon Eggs' new series dubbed The How-To Videos. These videos were just generally fucking hilarious. Hey! Hey, Lars! Huh? Get your ass down here so I can resurrect- Hey, uh, Raccoon Eggs! What is it, Lars? You want any of this food that I'm eating off the floor? floor? Yeah, no, I'm good, thanks. I, I just need you to get down- how the fuck did you even get up? I did a flip! You did a flip. That, that's- that's fucking- I weird. broke both my shoulders! He would take a type of concept that was very popular at the time, and then meme it out to infinity. Whether that be anything in the CSGO community, from their gambling websites to the general YouTube cancer that was surrounding it. Or he would just go out the whim and do something completely different, like how to get pussy, or how to become an alpha male. Rack never really limited himself into what he can and cannot do in this how-to series. He just generally made what he thought would be a funny concept into a really funny video. And that was the magic of them at the time. They were completely original. At this time, I had seen nothing like it. Which really showed how original Raccoon's content was, even in the early days. I mean, he was of course doing what he called CSGO filler because he believed it was just like every other CSGO video, but then there's his incredibly creative style of doing commentary videos along with these how-to videos, and I mean, it's no wonder why he's looked at as such a coveted creator nowadays. But at this time, Raccoon Eggs had kind of gotten bored. He wanted to do something more with his time. Luckily for him, he just got a DM on his Twitter account. Your homies with a convicted sex offender. Yeah. For context, narrator used to make vlogs, and one of the vlogs was his house getting destroyed by a tornado. I need you to throw this stool through the window. And the guy's like, what? What are you talking about? Just throw the stool through the window, it'll stop the alarm. Just throw it through the window. Oh, he picks up the stool, and I heard it collide with the window, and it bounced off the window. And, and he threw it like three or four times. And mind you, all the people that were in there in, in that Denny's, it, they're they're watching this right out outside of the storefront. <laughs> they're they're watching this waiter throw a chair th like through the through the window of the Denny's. Um, okay, I'm looking online and I'm trying. Hoglox <sighs> <laughs> just left.
The Solitary Confinement podcast was the next big venture for Rack, along with two other very small creators at the time, Call Me Carson and The Narrator, with the most popular being Call Me Carson standing at a solid 6k. They all ended up meeting on the same day due to Narrator adding them both to a call because, quote, they both sounded like I Notorious. At the time, all of the content everybody in that group was making had been drastically different which ended up leading to a pretty interesting podcast at times due to the drastic and different opinions of each other. But other times, it it was this shit. What, Fred is No, no. <laughs> okay, it's not even funny anymore. Claps Max, go ahead. It's not even funny anymore. <laughs> yeah, Neri, you, you killed it. It's, it's only funny Fred when Cart- <laughs> It's only funny when Carson does it. <laughs> yeah. The podcast could derail very quickly with Rack and Carson pissing off narrator so much that they make an entire trailer and episode out of it. And or narrator spams a bad joke and Carson and Rack get mad at him. And then he ends up getting mad at them for getting mad at him. Yo, oh, hi, actually, hey, Max, tearing, I actually want to- You're tearing hey, me apart, hey, Carson! Hey, hush. Oh, hi, Rack. Hey. Hush. I actually want to hear what Max has to say about the podcast. Yo, I, Rack, get it? I, Rack? Haha, <laughs> you're a terrorist, Rack. I'm, I'm literally going to just cut out your audio. Max, go ignore it, narrator. <laughs> but when the podcast was good, it was actually pretty entertaining, leading to some legit good stories and episodes. This podcast would also show as a kind of documentary of its own, documenting a lot of their careers and how they got to where they are now, showing Carson's struggle with what kind of content he wants to make, eventually going to the content he makes now, and showing Rack's just overall rise and growth through the entire years that the podcast was running. But whilst Rack, Narrator, and Call Me Carson all who recorded the Solitary Confinement podcast making videos with each other, there was something else in the waters, something I don't even think Rack himself could fathom at the time that would happen. Something truly spectacular. Why are you not super famous yet? You're a great YouTuber and you're friends with big people in the community. Tell me your opinion, pissed eggs. Needless to say, though, this was around the time where Raccoon Eggs would start picking up more speed, eventually making his 3K Q&A video, and along with doing a collaboration video with a fairly popular YouTuber at the time named Bucks in his CSGO Wood Ranked video. But soon, Rack would end up doing something so huge in his career. He would end up joining the most important surf server some could say he would ever join, where he would meet somebody truly important to the Raccoon Egg story. With knee gears. I am fast enough, thank you. Jessica can use a workout if you're not a man. I hear she do. Not the very good that cuts the strike, girl. So, like, how much money do you spend every month on weed? She has very stinky pussy. If you don't know who Fitz is, I would honestly think that the last couple years you have actually been living in a stone hut. From the controversy that happened earlier this year to his almost clean track record when it comes to video production and the quality of his videos, he has become a pretty prominent and respected figure in the CSGO community. At this time, he had just hit around 1 million subscribers when he met Rack in a surf server. This led to Rack appearing in one of Fitz's videos. Meow. Meow. Are you fucking beatboxing with your cat? Which eventually led to Rack commenting on this video and him getting invited to the group to play with the Misfits and Co, along with Fitz himself. This would be the start of Fitz and Raccoon Eggs' friendship into the more extreme portions of it, where it was less like two goofing friends and more like real friends. They had talks outside of the play sessions, 
And honestly, according to both of them, they just found each other to be really solid dudes. Although I will consistently claim that Rack never leached subs off of the Misfits, he did get a little bit of a sub boost and just in general a boost of being known in the CSGO community from the Misfits. Him appearing in Fitz's videos definitely did result in more people finding his channel. But I would never ever say that it was such a great push that Rack's entire career is based off of the Misfits. That's just not true. He never leached. He just appeared and some people found him really funny in Fitz's videos and decided to go over and sub. But here is the crossroad. Here is the area where there splits up into two different eras of Rack. There is the era before the 20k special and there is the era after. After the 20k special, Rack would go on to make some of his best and most known content. And not to say the videos before the 20k special were bad, for God's sakes, there were some really good videos right before the 20k special. But noticeably, after the 20k special, Raccoon Eggs' quality in video would increasingly go up, and his need for stickling good footage went up as well. After his 20k montage, he focused a lot more on quality over quantity. After this, he would start pushing some of his best content ever. This was the true new era of Rack. You smoke a bean? Yeah, coffee bean. Put a girl scout in the freezer. Go, I'm celebrating a jerk off a of horse days. Hey, honey, have you seen my wallet? Yeah, it's in my fucking throat. Because you're a prostitute and that's your job. So if a girl is hard to get, you can say she's a disease. That's what Elliot Roger did. I bet you have to put on sunscreen with a paint roller and it diagnosed me with slavery. I'm gonna jiggle my nuts so you can't shoot them. <laughs> After Raccoon Eggs' 20k special, his content would noticeably change. He stopped completely doing the commentary videos along with the how-tos and focused more on the bread and butter of his channel at the time, his CSGO funny moments. After Rack's 20k special, he would release five videos and then he would reach 50k. One of these videos is the one that is known for blowing up Rack's channel. It is un undoubtedly known as the most important video in Rack's career. That video, of course, is CSGO stand-up. I hate when, like, girls come to my door and they're like, hey, you want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? And I'm like, yeah, the weed. And then they just leave. <laughs> The thing about CSGO stand-up was it was entirely based on talking to strangers in CSGO. People ended up seeing the video and reposting the clips of his interactions with strangers over on another website called, um, iFunny. Fucking... <laughs> iFunny made Rack Poppy. <laughs> iFunny is a website that basically harbors quote unquote funny content for the most part, so that way people can log on and laugh. Of course, sometimes it can be completely terrible, but other times you might actually get a good laugh in very select moments. I mean, Rax is definitely one that you would get a good laugh from, but other stuff is, uh. Yeah, as you can see, kind of the gold standard of comedy. But either way, this would cause Rack to grow extremely quickly, hitting 50k and not even being able to release the special until he hits 60k. So, what video are you working on? Uh, I'm, I'm working on my 50k special. So you're at 60k! Get him, get him, get it doesn't, get him, it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't matter. It, I, you're I at 60k, you're late. Be, not to mention, after he hit 50k, he would, in a month's time, hit 100k. Rack was starting to gain hella views. It seemed as though nothing could go wrong. Rack would just continue consistently gaining tons and tons of viewers and grow and post consistently to keep those now tons and tons of viewers appeased. It seemed as though Rack had made it. He was on the up and up. There was nothing that could take him downhill. Oh boy, do I wish that was the case.
while Rack was gaining his fair share of viewers, his side project of the Solitary Confound podcast did not go unnoticed. In his 100k special, he actually shouted out the podcast. The shout out my podcast that I do with a couple of my fellow YouTubers where you can find more of my retarded sense of humor in lethal doses. Leading it to hit 25k in a matter of a month. Rack shouts out the podcast. That is what I did. Exactly. What I did is I put it in my at the beginning of my 100k Q&A. And now the podcast has, has more subs. At the time of recording this, it currently has 6,200 and this morning I woke up and it was at 3,900. So if that number was almost penis, doubled, it would have gone a boner. This growth of subs culminated in a Minecraft 25k special where we could see the bunch talking and playing Minecraft. After this Minecraft special, there would be one more podcast released and then the end of the podcast. But what caused the end of the podcast? I mean, it wasn't the Minecraft special. That would... That would be quite funny. If you look up to the episodes leading up to the final episode, along with that final episode, they discuss a bigger project on the horizon, something called the VidCon vlog. You see, Rack, Carson, and Narrator had all bought tickets to the content creator event known as VidCon, so that they would all meet up there and finally have an IRL representation of them all coming together. So what happened to the Solitary Confinement podcast? That's what I'm wondering, and I'm guessing that's what most people were wondering back then. Little light would be shed on this. Carson just saying that it was bad and it ended because it was- We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. For anybody who is a fan of the Solitary Confinement podcast, and you wanted to know why it ended, I'll go over it now. I'll go, I went at the beginning of the stream, I went on the ups, and now I will go on the downs. Oh gee, have things changed? Last time I recorded the audio for this video, I had my computer that was broken. I was trying to get it fixed, so I sent it in. I lost it for two weeks. I was gone for two weeks. What has happened in those two weeks? Let's just say the internet of my community has been let on fire. The entire videos that I watched, they have all been destroyed. If you don't know, let me get you up to speed. A YouTuber by the name of Call Me Carson, a very big part of this documentary, if you don't realize. Somebody who was kind of the co-founder of the Solitary Confinement podcast ended up getting a lot of allegations. And after those, two bombshells happened. I'll get into one bombshell later. But one of them basically reveals and uncovers every single thing that was unknown about SCP's ending. For this segment, I was going to go into the different clues and little hints about what happened to the solitary confinement podcast or what might have happened based on knowledge that was given from the actual creators from scp and also based on the speculation of a comment that was left on a youtube video i found but um yeah i don't have to do any of that anymore basically one of the other co-founders actual founder of the podcast narrator has released a video basically detailing why the Solitary Confinement podcast ended. And I have never seen more of a dumpster fire. Let me sum it up to you using some of the clips that narrator relayed. Uh, the VidCon and where it really kind of all fell through and why SCP isn't any anymore. The VidCon vlog happened. It, it was being recorded. They all went to VidCon. But... Something that I knew at the time, but I didn't think was that important. When they did get to VidCon, their Airbnb didn't exist. So, we get an Airbnb. Um, and the Airbnb was a scam. I was flying in from Detroit to LA. Both, and I got the first flight. Both Carson and Rack and, um, I believe, All Tribe... Uh, Josh was already there. Um, 
And I think, well, no, Noah joined a bit later. Um, so I was the first one there and I found out that, that it was a scam and that we didn't have an Airbnb and that I had just flown in to LA for the first time ever flying anywhere, really going on a vacation so far away from home. And I didn't have any kind of a plan. I didn't know what the fuck to do. And so I text Carson and I'm like, Hey, the Airbnb is fake. Shit like that. Like, what the fuck are we going to do? And I'm not on my meds at this point, and this is my fault. It doesn't excuse my behaviors during VidCon, but it at least lets you know why I did some of them. I don't excuse any of the behavior, and I will apologize to everybody individually over this. But, um, so I was panicking because I had four hours where I was alone and there was nothing I could really do other than take my suitcase and go to VidCon again. And I was having a manic episode. They did not have an Airbnb. And in narrator's words... But this was like my first big trip. This was most of our first big trips. And we had to stay in a shitty motel next to a Denny's. And needless to say, a manic me wasn't really taking it very well once we left VidCon from the safe area of hey, we're here, it's whatever. So the first day ends. It goes okay, other than the Airbnb. Then the second day begins, and we wake up in the hotel room. We have two hotel rooms. One for... I'm pretty sure Noah was there with us. I'm pretty sure. So that we have one for Carson, Raccoon Eggs, and I, and then a second one for All Tribe and Noah. I could be wrong about Noah, but I'm pretty sure he was with us. Um... Because I know he was with us for a certain part of it because we we had edibles later and it was a magical experience and we were basically friends for life because of this. Um, so we go, I we wake up and I'm starting to like panic a bit again because we can't really afford to stay in, well, at least I couldn't. I didn't know about their financial situations. I don't know about their financial situations. I'm not that kind of guy, but we were all small, poor. Um, so I was panicking because I can't afford a new flight home. I'm already here. Like, what the fuck's going on? So I was having a manic episode basically right when I woke up. Yeah, it, it was bad. So that Airbnb that didn't exist ended up causing a lot of trouble. And we could even see the Airbnb not existing reflecting in one of Rack's streams. Also in Rack's VidCon video where All Tribe says, Why am I Airbnb a scam? The Airbnb being a scam showed to be very, very problematic for the trio and the friends that they had come with. This certainly led to more attacks from narrator's disorder which was not helped or aided by Carson's urging of him to get more angry during his attack. I was stressing out and Carson was just making fun of me and he was poking me and prodding me and just like instigating me in a manic state just to go more and more and just to get further onto the edge. Shortly after the VidCon vlog, about a month later, narrator would ask Carson, when are they gonna do another podcast? Which Carson would promptly respond with, the podcast is done. Carson wanted to cut narrator out of the picture. He had gone behind narrator's back to ask Rack if they would wish to make a new podcast together. Rack promptly stated a little bit after this that that would not be fair to narrator and he would not enjoy to do that. This led to Carson going rogue and taking over the podcast's account, leading to a terrible video being uploaded, which basically detailed how SCP is dead and how it was being replaced with Unzipped. Since narrator and Rack are gone, I'm going to be changing the branding of the channel to be called Unzipped. And for Unzipped, I'm going to be doing my own podcast to try and make up for my uh, failure to keep the Solitary Confinement podcast together. And I'm just going to be doing it with my friends Josh Rister and Altrev.
this video really showed how demented this trio's friendship had truly become. Narrator and Carson wanted nothing to do with each other, while Rack was stuck in the middle, trying to figure out what he himself could do. After the Solitary Confinement podcast and Rack had a clear slowdown of content, presumably because two of his friends who he had been playing with for years now hated each other. After his VidCon 2018 vlog, Rack would post seven videos, eight if you count the now unlisted Shower Thoughts too. I would largely point at the Solitary Confinement podcast split for this lactor of content. But if you were a Rack fan at this time, you could tell there might have been something else, which was inevitably illustrated in a video called The End of CSGO. The era of making videos interacting with strangers is over, whether, li whether I like it or not. The end of CSGO for any Rack fan was a tragic video to watch. Not necessarily because it was bad. It was funny. It kept up pretty consistently. But because of the last five minutes and what it illustrated. This video detailed all the problems Rack had on the content side of things. And I feel the best person to discuss it is him himself. So, for this section, I'm going to use and cherry pick, in my opinion, the most crucial parts to describe Rack's feeling at this time in his career, along with the best points to know why he's been AFK. I always wanted to find creative ways to make people laugh, and I did that through many years, many different channels, many different identities until I came to Raccoon Eggs. And I started doing commentary when I was like 16 or 17, and then I started to shift more towards like trying to make people laugh in video games. And I loved making the videos. I loved editing them. I loved uploading them, seeing all the positive feedback and support. And a big part, I think, of what made them work and what set them apart from anybody else that would do that same genre of video was that I didn't try to force it. I didn't try to like join a server and just try to like force a reaction, you know, tell shitty jokes. Um, it was always like I wanted to talk to people. I wanted to get to know them a little bit and let the jokes happen naturally where they were appropriate. The same way you would talk to anybody else. That naturally, the more attention my YouTube got, the more attention I would get in CSGO. And it started getting uh, treated less and less like I was equal and more like I was put on a pedestal, like I was above everybody. And I was confused because the whole point of making the videos was never really to be above anybody. It was, you know, as generic as it sounds to help people to make people laugh, to spread positivity, all that generic bullshit. And it was no longer that I was able to get to know people because everybody just wanted to get to know me instead. Uh, nothing about my interactions with people felt human because nobody viewed me as a human. And it might sound like some boohoo I'm famous bullshit, but <laughs> it goes deeper than like, you know, a rich kid crying that the car their dad got them is the wrong color. Uh, the way I interacted with strangers was literally the basis of the fame in the first place. and. It's frustrating to realize that what got you to where you are today is slowly fading into the past, especially if it's not your fault. I that the era of making videos interacting with strangers is over, whether, li whether I like it or not. Um, I'm homosexual. All right, I'm finished. Rosa Parks invented buses. B. I am but a nigga. Back to work, guys. I got this. Spiffy. Oh like my god, you know, you knew exactly what the fuck I was fishing for. Yo. We're gonna have to backpedal here just a little bit because it is absolutely criminal to not mention JC the Caster whilst going over Rack's history. JC the Caster met Raccoon Eggs all the way back in late 2017 through Call Me Carson. Needless to say, they didn't take long to click. Shortly after them meeting, Rack had him on SCP. Today, we're here with JC the Caster. Say hello. Hi. And shouted him out in a CSGO video. Everyone, roll out the red carpet for King JC the Caster. 
JC, after this, was also consistently featured in most of Rack's content. After the Solitary Confinement podcast ended, JC and Rack started their own podcast called Homie Talk, which was foreshadowed in the terrible video that was also detailing Unzipped. Instead, he's going to be doing a podcast with JC called Homie Talk. This Homie Talk podcast was actually originally supposed to consist of JC, Rack, and Disappointing Salad, and was meant to be the true successor of SCP. I might be doing a podcast with uh, Salad and JC after solitary confinement officially ends. But later, it was changed just to JC and Rack. Homie Talk Podcast was a goldmine to anybody who enjoyed the duo of JC the Caster and Raccoon Eggs. The stories that they would tell would be so entertaining, and just the general energy of them bouncing off of each other for jokes, along with general interest in topics, made for an absolutely magical podcast. So if it hits someone, I was more... Okay, and I You're feel bad because... <laughs> I mean, it depends on where I hit them, dude. But in retro, I feel kind of bad because the first thing that went through my mind is like, oh, fuck, I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> Sadly, after the fourth episode of the Solitaire Confinement podcast, the channel would go dark, along with information surrounding the podcast. Rack's channel would also go fairly dark after the fourth episode was released. Rack, after these eight videos, had some pretty dramatic changes in his life. On record, he had stated he had been in a house with mold. The reason I'm here is because I had to evacuate my house because it's like overwhelmed with the smell of mold. And also, on top of that, I found out that there was a fire there in 2011 and the landlord never properly cleaned up after it. I'm waiting for, uh, I have a new place that I'm moving to on June 1st. Until then, I'm staying with my dad. With this, we do know he went to VidCon 2019 with fellow YouTubers Too Mad, JC the Caster, and Asian Styles, along with a couple others. After this trip, though, he would come back and stream Overwatch, where he had detailed the fact that he had a general lack of IRL friends, which was really causing a lack of motivation. Eight months by yourself is lit literal cancer. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I need roommates. I go crazy alone. I'm going crazy right now. I haven't fucking talked to anybody in forever. Not forever, but... What is it? Friday? I literally got back from TwitchCon two days ago, <clears throat> and I'm already going crazy. Just being back in the fucking isolation set sensory deprivation tank that is my fucking apartment. And the worst part is that I did this to myself because of how many shitty experiences I had with roommates that I decided I'd put my foot down and that being alone would be better. Christ, I can't win. It's either, it's either suffer alone or suffer with a shitty roommate and clean for two people and a shitty landlord. Since then, he has appeared in some goons videos. How do I get out? My How do we get out? <laughs> Stand up. But besides that, he's relatively off the grid. Although, we still know some information about Rack due to JC the Caster's Twitch streams. JC the Caster's Twitch account evidently would be the hub for Homie Talk Podcast 5. No, I mean, it, it's, it's fine. It's fine, but like, you shouldn't do that like everywhere, you know? Like, if I have oh, a yeah. kid. Yeah. God forbid. Like, if I have a kid, God forbid, if I have a kid, you know, yeah. I'm gonna, uh, if, even if he's, like, really successful, I'm gonna tell everybody he's a janitor, so that, like, no matter what he does, he th th he's gonna impress them, because their expectations are so low. A now deleted stream called Talkin'. I live my entire life in spite. When someone says I can't do something, they're probably right, <laughs> but I, I just try to, I just try to, you know, listen, man, I took that personal, I'm gonna keep that with me for a couple years, and, and that's, uh, that's just how I roll, man, you know? So next time you, you see un, me, just unwind, fucking insult me. Unwind the spite. I feel like my genetics are going to go south in 10 years. Along with a couple other streams which talk about where he went. In one of these streams, it's heartbreaking to hear about Rack constantly having to move. That way? No, not how that way. How you doing, Rack? Um, uh, yeah, I'm really tired. I spent the entire day looking at houses. Um, I don't know if I've said this on your stream yet, but I, I have to move again, like for the sixth time in two years, so, Jeez. yeah, money, uh, money and time are both Money tight. and bitches. Money and bitches. Oh, bit, I mean, I prefer tight bitches as well, but that's not the main concern at the moment. Hmm. What is the main concern at the moment? Because my main concern is I don't know how to get out of this mineshaft. 
My main concern is, I want to leave the city. All right, I've preached about this. I don't then like leave the city. city. Leave well, the, the problem city. is, I can't do it right away, but I can also do it probably in less than a year. But the problem is, every place you have to sign a year lease, unless you want to get like a, a shitty apartment on the thirtieth floor of a skyscraper. Move in with a friend. That's what I would do. Ah. Uh, no, I don't have anybody to move in with, dude. All my friends that are my age, they don't work hard enough to have the money to make rent. Along with his struggle of wanting to be looked at differently by his audience. Yep. Rack, do you have a favorite creator? Um, no, because I think YouTube is obsolete now. I think YouTube was a viable thing, like... Okay, for, I mean, like, for a content creator. If you want to just upload a random video, obviously YouTube's the best option, but I feel like for, if you're a creator that wants to get out there, that YouTube is obsolete. Like, it's better to just stream. Yeah, but, <clears throat> stream where? Where are you gonna stream? I don't know, it's just that Twitch, like, completely capitalizes on, like, the, uh, the viewer-to-creator relationship, you know? So now YouTube is obsolete in terms of wanting to build a community because you can build a community so much easier on Twitch. No, you could build a community so much easier on YouTube. So much easier on YouTube. What if, what, what if you take stream highlights and then upload that? Huh? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine? My yeah. point is, my point is, however, is that you're saying that it's so much easier to, you know, grow on Twitch. That's not, that's not true. It's so no, much no, easier to grow on YouTube. I, I say, I don't know. I, no, yeah. I I'm saying it's easier to grow on Twitch. I said, I no, said, but you said it was obsolete. You said to, YouTube was no, no, obsolete, no, 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 and then you went over to Twitch. It, 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 obsolete it, it, means it's like no, no more. Don't use it. It's not. It's not worth it. No, 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 no. All right. No, no, no. Obsolete. No, no, no. Obsolete means like I mean, in terms of building like a connection to your audience, like Twitch is way better to do that than YouTube. That's true. That is true. But it's not obsolete. Obsolete maybe in that sense, right? Yeah, Maybe, it, but like for, it's not okay, obsolete stuff, in the sense of like starting like, off. Yeah. For the stuff that I want to do. Okay. There's a fair if bit I of projecting do, if, right now. If, if I want to do like funny shit, I feel like obviously editing down to just the funny parts is funnier. But then if you want to build a connection, you got to also stream. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I if people only view you through YouTube, then it's like, oh, he's, he's always like that when he... No, sometimes... It, Sometimes I bomb, dude. It's not always like that. I think people expect that. I think that most people would understand that, that sometimes, like, that's not you 99% of the time. Like, you're not yeah, gonna be spinning jokes like that. Yeah, but kids don't understand that. 12 year olds don't understand yeah, that. Yeah, but who's, who, what YouTuber, what streamer is, like, staying awake at night, like, oh, I wonder how my child fan base is gonna think about me. Like, <laughs> who the fuck is, who cares? Who the fuck cares about that? I mean, they're I, kids. I, I they're there for care. entertainment. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. It's not about caring what they think. It's about caring about wanting to build a connection. That's all. It's about not. Okay, wanting you to trying to build a connection with your twelve-year-old fan base is not what I want to hear. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying I want to build a connection with twelve-year-olds. I'm saying I want to build a connection with the people that are actually out there, that are few and far between, that I actually would get along with, that watch. But yeah, how would you fix that? You would stream more, right? Yeah, you would stream. So why don't you do that? <laughs> Because I'm fucking in the middle of making sure I have a place to sleep at night. But once I figure that out, I'll stream. That. Rack stated in one of these Twitch streams how he doesn't want to come back to YouTube, but instead would love to come back to Twitch due to the more personal connections he could make with his audience. And since then, we haven't gotten any news from Rack. That is what I would say until now. You see, while I didn't have my computer for those two weeks, I said that two bombshells had been dropped, one of which was the narrator's video about the Solitary Confinement podcast. The other was Raccoon Eggs' Twitter account becoming active again. Rack, in this new active tweet, had posted a update, which also showed off the fact of his lack of places to live, and talked about how he has an allergy, which makes it generally hard for him to live in most places. He also would tweet on later that he was getting kicked out of an Airbnb because they didn't have a kitchen and he cooked food with a lighter. I don't know when Rex is gonna be back. I hope it's sooner than later. I'm not sure if he's gonna stick up with what he said about coming back through Twitch streams. I'm not sure how he's gonna come back. I don't know if he'll ever come back, despite him saying that he will. All I know is if Rack ever makes another video, his audience of millions of fans, along with me, and my friends, will 100% be ready to watch and cherish 
whatever laughs he brings to the table, whatever content he decides to put out. All I want to see is more rack content. And I think the best way to illustrate that is by making an entire fucking documentary about his YouTube career and or lack thereof. I'm thankful for all of you people who have watched this video and made it this far. And I'm thankful for Rack for getting me through some hard times and generally giving me some laughs on days where I didn't feel like I wanted to get up in the morning. I feel like in any good piece of media, it always outros with a piece of music, a symphony, something to show off how grand it was. And for this one, I had one of my friends commission for me a cover of a song that any Rack fan will be able to recognize from the first three chords. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night.